Oh, Flower of Scotland, when will... Oh, we're on yet? Oh, sorry. Uh, today we'll be disassembling a Pelican M1000. Now, this, the things that will be shown here will generalize to the M800, but not to all pins. For example, here we have a vintage 400NN. It cannot be disassembled in the same way. A Pelican M205 cannot be disassembled in the same way. So this is only going to extend to the M800 and M1000 lines, at least for as far as I know. And I know a lot. So, first thing to do is uncap the pen. Put away the cap. As you probably know, these nib and feet units are screw-in. So, put them on your finger. Put your thumb on the feed. Gently unscrew the barrel. The good thing about doing it like this is that you will not disalign or misalign the nib and feed because you're keeping them in place. Of course you could also unscrew, grab them here and start to unscrew while keeping the barrel stationary. But that's not as optimal. When you are ready, put this away. And now we're going to have to look at the barrel. Now, fortunately it is completely possible to remove the piston housing unit there. But you will need a tool. And strangely enough, it is the Twisby tool that fits excellently. Unscrew the blind cap, just as if you were filling the pin. Now notice, when we zoom in there, maybe you can see it a bit better. Notice that right there, there's a flat bit, a round bit, a flat bit again, and a round bit again, and then a flat bit again, but that's the same I showed you before. Now, I, I just wanted to give that away. I know it's difficult. So you, you grab your Twisby wrench, and you just slide it in there on the flat bit. It should be fairly easy. You just slide it in there. Now, something I like to do is screw that blind cap back in place a bit so that the wrench is sort of kept in place. When you are going to unscrew this, let me zoom out there. Well, that was zooming in, wasn't it? When you're about to unscrew this, note that you have to screw this to the right, not to the left to unscrew it. So instead of going that way, we're going that way. First time it will be a little bit difficult, but after that it will get easier. And then, You can just pull out the entire piston. A couple of things you can do here. First of all, apply some silicon grease to the seal for a good seal and smooth operation. Secondly, apply silicon grease to these threads, again for smooth operation and screwing the piston up and down. If you keep screwing this bit, then the piston is going to come out and the blind cap is going to come off. And the piston guiding unit is going to come out. And then you're just holding this little brass thing in your hands. And if you don't know how to assemble it again, it's fairly simple. First, put in the piston guiding unit, like this. It only fits in on one end and only in one way. So you really cannot go wrong. Then, screw the blind cap on there. But not all the way down. That's not going to work. So... This is a bit of a trial and error thing. What I like to do is just grab the blind cab, give it a couple of twists like that, and then see what happens. Grab your piston, put it in there, and screw it back in there. Now, what you want to have is a situation just like this, where you can screw the blind cap all the way down without the end of the piston pushing up there and making sure you cannot push it down. Because if you cannot screw this down all the way, you're going to get a gap between the blind cap and the barrel, which looks a little bit ugly. Also, you want the piston to be able to be to pull back all the way, because the farther you can pull this back in, the greater the incapacity you have. In all honesty, it's not going to make a huge difference, and this is a pretty big barrel, so it holds a lot of ink anyway. So if you're not entirely satisfied, because when I screw that back in place, you see there's still a bit of a gap. So, you could screw this further down, but of course when you do that, 
the piston won't go in that far at all. So as I said, my preferred method, just screw that blind cap on at about halfway through, put this back in, screw it back in, see what happens. If you don't like that, take it out again, screw the blind cap in, not as far, giving it one twist there, and then a half more. Now, this does not go any further, probably because the piston is actually pushing against the inside of the blind cap. But what can be seen is that there is a small gap right there, which means you would get a gap between the barrel and the piston turning knob. And as I don't want that, I'm going to screw that back out. Screw it about halfway in there, which seems to be a sweet spot. Slate that piston in. Screw this back in place. It screws all the way down, and this is about as far as it will go. That's all I'll need. Then, screw it out a bit further again, so that you can slide your wrench in. Gently screw the blind cap in place. Don't over tighten that. Just a little bit, just enough to keep this in place. Insert it into the barrel gently. And this time, we're going to the left to tighten it up. Don't over tighten anything. You don't want to crack your, your barrel. So as, as soon as it's in there, it's in there. Don't over tighten. And as you can see, when I screw this open now, it doesn't open up. Then, make sure there's no grease on your fingers. Grab your nib unit. Put it on your finger, put your thumb on there. Screw it back in, and again, do not over tighten. As soon as it stops moving, you're done. As I said, you can also do this with an M800, and you know what? That's all there is to it. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. But not after you've had some agus.